<laughs> oh no! Lock. There we go. All right. So it's not. Hey there. <laughs> hey girl. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, that sounded healthy. There's a beam there. Ah, eh, you know. Um. So it's not uh, 112 degrees right now. I'm like looking at myself. <laughs> oh, okay. How's this? It's like half of that melon in there. Slightly better? Perfect. Oh, I thought this was a hair sticking out from the side of my beard. You could slide over this way a little bit too. Oh, I could. Watch this. Hey. Perfect. <clears throat> Cheers. Just got done setting up our sound stage. <laughs> we put a lot of effort into this show. <laughs> We got this company provided phone, this uh, selfie stick that Lois and Gordy gave to me. <laughs> yeah, put a lot of effort into this show. High quality editing. High quality editing. Um, it's gorgeous dome. This takes a lot of work. Don't just uh, don't just wake up with this. I mean, we got three or four people. Shalom, <laughs> Caddy Wampus. That do our uh, uh, makeup and everything else. Yeah, I mean, y'all never see the production crew, um, mostly because they don't exist. <laughs> Uh, anywhere but up here, but uh, yeah, it's a good time. So we are going to talk about bags tonight. You should um, drink, drink. Um, talk about the Patreon video we just shot today. Oh yeah, okay. So because some of y'all are brain damaged enough to want to give us money, hey Palmetto, what's up, brother? Um. Because some of y'all give us money on Patreon. What we've decided to do on Patreon is start offering micro consultations. So basically, um, you get to ask us a question, you know, and it, there's no real structure to this. Just write in and say, hey, what about this? And then uh, we will shoot a quick video response to that and upload it to Patreon for the betterment of the Patreon tribe there. And I think that's a pretty good business model per se. Yeah. You know, I think it provides some value and some access. Well, and something we would talk about in, the, in depth on YouTube. So right. it provides unique content. Uh, yeah, it's a lot well. more personalized too. Yes. You know, very much so personalized for that person in their situation. So, um, I think it creates value for the, the patrons at Patreon. So uh, you can go check that check that out if you want to. The link is always down in the description. If it's not, it will be after I upload this. So um, I think it's still TJ Morris NTX Mag at Patreon. They don't like you messing with your, your URL. It's not like... Uh, That's fine. Yeah, YouTube, you can change your URL like three times every 90 days. Huh. So you can change your name, your URL, whatever you want. Patreon's like, nah, you're stuck with it. You better like it. So, yeah, that's the Patreon thing. So, gear? Gear. Gear. Should we review some? Sure. Okay. So, I was watching a video with one guy. I can't remember who it was, but every time he said bag... He had to be from either the Northeast or like uh, maybe definitely Rust Belt area mm. into like Eastern Pennsylvania because he kept saying bag. <laughs> it's a bag. Gotcha. This is a nice bag. Got gotcha your bag. B E H G, bag. It's a great bag. Love it. So I will be saying bag a lot tonight. Nice. Yeah. What should we start with? Standard. Standard. Military type bag. Should we give some context first? Sure. We have what, eight bags? Uh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I didn't even bring out my Blackhawk one that I used in the early 90s. That literally is like a, a there's, it was so complex in the early 90s, it was like a Jan Sport bag. Like that's how, <laughs> right. that's how, that's how much <laughs> options you got. Um, actually, everything was more about web gear. Yeah. Um, than it was about, and I, I'm going to say this wrong because I just don't remember anymore, but I was taught. I'm just going to call it levels, like level one, level two, level three. Line gear. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
I think that's one of the things we'll talk about tonight. But it's like, what's on your person? Yep. As your last line. Um, what's, you know, secondary? Like, I have one that we'll take a look at. That is a little secondary bag that I can hang off uh -huh. outside. Um, so that's, uh, you know, set level or line. Uh, and then, you know, third line, you're looking at your pack then, mm -hmm. or, you know, and you can include your web gear into it as well uh, as part of um, the first line. But the whole concept behind it is if you're fully loaded and you got to drop bag and, and go, yep. that you can drop by level and not be left with nothing. Right. So that's just a little tip. I don't know what they're teaching now. I mean, I figure it's got to be somewhat of the same. At least as good, probably. Yeah. You'd imagine at least as good. Pocket fanny pack. Palmetto, you're going to look good with a fanny pack on. I, uh, you know, I approve this comment. My name is TJ Morris, and I approve this comment. I, I approve you comment. definitely need a fanny pack, but not like, like not like, pink. yeah, not one of the little slimline ones. One of those like big, gay, pink <laughs> fanny pack, like, like the size of my head. Oh, Joe Rogan. Oh, it must be good. Joe Rogan wears one. He also takes LSD in an isolation tank. We'll all do that. So, <laughs> man purse all day. Roger that. Uh, yeah, you know, Joe Rogan, I like his podcast. Uh, he's just a little eh, yeah, he's a, sometimes. He's on the edge. He's yeah. definitely on the edge. He, yeah. But, eh, you know, whatever. I learned some very interesting things. And he definitely dips in the other side. <laughs> Yeah, he, he kind of veers uh, mostly for his guests. That's correct. The uh, Peter Schiff, most recent Peter Schiff uh, one that he did, by the end of it, I was just screaming. I'm like, get to the point. Stop talking and answer the question. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, I, I like the Joe Rogan podcast because they're like three to four hours long. And at the shop, I can put my earbuds in, ignore you. Yeah. And uh, well, just I throw sh stuff at your back. <laughs> stuff, yeah. <laughs> So, all right, Bag Apocalypse 2018. <laughs> Start with that little one down there. The little guy? Yeah, the little guy. <sighs> so this is what I'd call, you know, second line. Right. Um, cross shoulder. Cross shoulder. It uh, mounts around your leg. Um, yep. You know, for me, I've got an extra knife in here. Mm -hmm. This is a CRKT actually has been one of my uh more favorite knives um but i have that in the pocket just for just for an extra knife and then uh flap flips up um you got a front pocket and i've got some chapstick heck a yeah knife, heck uh, yeah fire starter um one of those fire steels mm -hmm. uh, and then you know some containers to Hold water, <laughs> some uh, small first aid kit. A we need to do a review on this. I have one open. Um, when you're talking about like like bug out bag uh, food, right? Oh, the ration bars. That's 2,400 calories. Yeah. Uh, and one of them actually broke open, and I tried to get my kids to taste it, and they wouldn't eat it. <laughs> but then I tasted it, and it was like it had a uh, Almost like a granola cookie flavor to them. And they're actually really good. Um, but again, you know, fire starting stuff. Um, Hold on, they're asking a question yeah, over yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there is no donate cash and no super chat button. Because according to YouTube, we don't qualify for that yet. I don't know what the parameters are, but I'll look into it. Um, if you feel like donating something go to the go back there's a video called real people semicolon need help and go give a aileen some money she's uh, still got breast cancer yes please and she's dealing with it and we've trying put, to pay the bills trying to pay the bills we've put a bunch of money in her pocket already but she's not there yet so if you feel inclined to send money this direction send it that direction instead so um yeah and i'll find out what the deal with super chat is not this is not our full-time job but i'll look into it i'll look into it continue so you know again just snake bite kit um i think this is the older one as well mm -hmm. that actually has the razor blade in it 
Yes. Yep. Um, the new ones, surprisingly, don't have a razor blade in them. Yeah. It's just the antiseptic and uh, um, you know, a little, tourni little tourniquet uh, and then the suction so you can suck it out of there. By the way, if you ever run across a rattlesnake or you kill a rattlesnake um, to eat in a survival situation, when you skin it, um, hang it from the head down, skin it from the bottom up because if it happens to be pregnant, um, rattlesnakes give live birth uh, and you cut it from the top down, those little baby rattlesnakes are going to fall down into you and they don't regulate their poison can actually get bit by a rattlesnake and not get poisoned because they choose to inject or not. Um, the little ones do not. They, everything they got Yeah. and you will die quick. But, um, but yeah, it's like, you know, this is like, I'd call my second line. Um, you know, if I really wanted to let out and, and, and throw this on as well, uh, my flashlight's not in here right now. But I usually have a flashlight there, and that brings me into like my one, my one travel item. Um, so there's a question for you guys. Like, Hold on, I need that knife. Yeah. What is? You need this beer open. You're gonna open this beer for me? <laughs> yeah. So story behind this, I was in Iraq, and uh, Brian Bosworth. I know Brian Bosworth. And Barry Switzer were there. Um, and so I walked in with like the fake six pack of beer uh -huh. and you know, Bosworth was like, Oh man, can I get one of those? I'm like, it's, Hey, it's fake. Yeah. And, uh, he's like, you know, not twist top. So the, uh, it's hard to do on my side like this. There you go. But the Beretta <laughs> is the perfect, uh, bottle opener. But I did that in front of Bosworth. <laughs> I did that in front of Bosworth and he was like, holy shit that's cool i'm gonna do it when i get home i'm like please don't shoot yourself <laughs> but, oh here you still want this no oh. i just needed the knife to open the beer thank you yeah side story but... brian bosworth worked for my dad for a time really yeah huh. yep yeah it's... he was super cool switzer was super cool so i actually met him a long time ago i was working the door at a bar and it was his restaurant slash bar. Yeah. And he walked up with his wife and I'm like, excuse me, I need to see your ID. And he goes, he's like, ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, I'm not joking. So I made, <laughs> I made Barry Switzer, I, made, I, I carded him and I made him show me his ID. <laughs> he remembered it. That's awesome. 20 years later, I reminded him of the story and he was like, holy crap. That's and awesome. And he yelled across the room, hey, Bosworth. This guy carted me. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So, uh, Palmetto, I see you over there. Um, this channel's not monetized. That's, I guess, why we can't do super chat. Uh, we've we want to avoid monetizing. Yeah. The I... the challenge is sooner or later. Um, thank you. Thank you for googling it. You are our chief researcher for the evening. <laughs> Director um, of research. Director of research. Or door. Your door. Um, because you open us up to the world. Yes. Thank, thank you. You are a door unto the world. <laughs> um, I see you, Curry Caldwell. So here's the thing, right? YouTube eventually will start putting ads on our channel, whether we want them to or not. It's in their best interest to advertise on channels that have lots of views and lots of airtime because people see the ads and that's how they earn revenue. So for us, I don't want to monetize. You don't want to monetize. At some point, we're going to have to. And I don't know. We'll just see. Just, just know if you see ads on this channel, it's not because we want them there. How's that? Yeah. So... We'd rather you buy a t-shirt from us or something uh, so you get something tangible to or have in your hand. Set. Or a catheter set. Or a ball hanger. <laughs> uh, whatever. So, all right. Moving on. Yeah, your turn. So, we, okay. You pick one. I'll pick this one. This is the... <laughs> Where'd I go? <laughs> Let's try... Okay. Is that better? I'd rather you get paid out of YouTube's pocket than mine. Yeah, well, let's try this. Oh, okay. Hey, that's perfect. You're great at this. 
we're great at this. We're awesome. <laughs> this is the 511 uh, Rush 72. I think this is like a 3,800 cubic inch bag. Bag, I'm sorry, bag. bag. 3,800 cubic inch bag. It's pretty good. You got this pouch right here. You could put like your assault helmet in here. Um, you could put your sleep system, you know, your- uh, Your baton selfie stick. Your baton selfie stick, the batani stick. <laughs> Patent pending. BSS. <laughs> BSS. Um, not to be confused with the battle selfie stick, which, <laughs> infant, thank you. Um, question mark. Question mark. Ish. So you can put your, yeah, you put your infant in here. I see. Yeah, you put an ah. infant in here. So it's got a, a infant carry bag. A decent amount of room in there for children or uh, your sleeping bag or your, you know, Salt gear, whatever. It's got this pocket up front. Pretty good pocket. What I love about 511 is the zippers are great and the pulls are great. Like they just make really good stuff. And you know, it's got all kinds of organization inside of here. The thing is, I don't think most people use all the organization that's provided. And by most people, I mean me. I don't. Um, sometimes I do, but uh, thank you, Dante. Sometimes I use it, but I don't get like super. I know some guys are like super wrapped up. This in it. pocket gets an M4 magazine, and this pocket gets my ham radio, and this pocket is only for batteries. I'm like, you know, that's cool. If you're into that, that's cool, but that's just not how I roll. It's more of that you know where your stuff's at. I would agree with that. You know, I don't. So I can see the the pros in yeah in standardizing where you're putting stuff right because then you'll always be able to know where to find it. I agree with that. You know, for me, NRA supports five eleven. Huh. Good to know. I didn't know that. So it's got another pocket up here, all right? Not to be confused with the sunglasses pocket, which is up here, yeah, up top. I like uh, on five eleven. Yeah. Now, one thing I will say about this, I had a bag like this. I broke a pair of sunglasses in this. Uh-huh. So just, it depends on how packed you are and how full it is. And how oakly your shades are. Yeah. And how oakly your shades are. Oh, uh, no. They were, they were issuing us the, uh, like, oakly knockoffs. Yeah. So. Which are still, like, 70 or 80 bucks in the store. Yeah. It's like, rip it. Rip it. The official, the official we energy, need, energy drink of We need a pallet of rip it, yes. <laughs> I, I don't want to rip it unless I can smell cordite. Like there's... <laughs> Laura Mort. Why, hello there, Laura Mort. Who are you? Who are you? It's good to see you. Uh, welcome to the channel. New person. Um, so it's got this yoke. I like that 511 does this. Um, there's a couple other brands that do something similar to this, but rather than just having two straps that come straight off, this is very comfortable, uh, at least for a bear size person. And it, um, and comfort is important, but you, you need to select something that's good and comfortable for you because if you've got to carry it for a long time, yep, it's the last thing you want is something that just doesn't fit on your body. A, and especially a bag like this that you could easily put 50 pounds of crap into. Oh, yeah. Having this helps. And it's got the waistband down here, yep. which is tucked at the moment. But So a waistband on a larger pack is something that you... Um, exactly, Palmetto. That's exactly right. The yoke is exactly that. It distributes it across the shoulders. And when your shoulders are like my size shoulders where you have to turn sideways to get through some doors this helps a lot some most <laughs> most doors like unless it's like a shipping and receiving department um do you have a freight entrance <laughs> I, would, I would prefer the excuse, freight entrance excuse me sir where's the freight elevator um <laughs> yes wit is still here um we got so it's got side pockets this is about the right size. You could put like a one liter smart water bottle in there, yeah. something like that. It's got all the gear organization. Um, it's a clamshell design, which I dig. I'm not terribly crazy about top loading bags, 
if you're going to be diving in and out of them. If yeah. you're just moving gear from one place to another, they're fine. But for me, I like the clamshell. Well, and I like, I'll sh we'll show a bag here that I bought uh, through an ad I saw. And it was like, best tactical bag ever. You know, and it was right. three for like 50 bucks. But I'm like, you know, I want to get different bags for the boys and for Laura. You know, just get yep. something, right? And uh, like you can see here in the stitching, this is stitched, folded over, so that you can't... The buckle can't come, come off the off, end. Yep. Right? And so the bag that we got, you'll actually see on it. Uh, and it's not, it doesn't actually look like a bad bag. Um, but the buckles can slide off, so I'm going to have to get some needle and thread. And, and, and so um, the ends so that the buckles don't come off. Yep. Because I actually had one come off already because my big man literally wore the bag for like two days in a row because he was just so happy about getting his own bag that we're going to fill with stuff right and he just like wore it for two days and i found a buckle on the ground so yeah it matters it does the attention to detail matters especially if you know you're bugging out i'm bugging out man so okay big clamshell you can get all the way into it um great bag this is a about a i like this because like a there's a post on uh uh on a network we follow um and uh it was about how to load your bag from bottom to top this removes right the fact that you have to load it bottom to top um because you can access everything inside of it if you stack it no matter where you stack it so um i would just yeah provide that too i would still a lot of times you tend to put the heavier items in the bottom yeah yeah um depending on how far you're going be careful with that because it can your lower back it can, yep. it'll jerk you back and throw your your gait off which is not good so this is the 511 bag it's about a hundred and bag i'm sorry bag big uh the rush 72 it's about 175 to 200 dollars ish. You're paying for it. You're yeah, you're paying for it. But it's a very good bag. And and you know, I, I like I like the mole stuff that you can add to, but I think a lot of people go overboard and add too much stuff, which then becomes a snag hazard. Yeah, I agree with that. It becomes a weight hazard. Yeah. Um, you know, the heavier it is, the more prone to injury you're going to be yep because you are not going to be as sure-footed so you know all these things are considerations and uh you know whatever bag you have and get a bag to your capabilities yep like you know if you need to only have 20 pounds in your bag 20 pounds in your bag and that's it yep. because your mobility is way more important than you having to put on like just because you have a thousand molly straps doesn't mean that you need to use <laughs> yes, them. Everyone. That's yeah, correct. That's very true. Um, so yeah, that's the 511 bag. Yep. I would also add, um, I just redid the first podcast episode for the second time because the first one was on the phone that doesn't exist anymore. So oh, it didn't turn back on. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, thing, that thing's a doorstop. <laughs> it's a paperweight. Uh, Digging sand out it's, from the it's river. I pulled the SIM card out and water fell out the side <laughs> of it. So <laughs> it's it's completely done. But uh, I was talking about in that, as far as pack weight, do not exceed thirty pound or thirty percent of your overall body weight. Period. So if you're a hundred and fifty pound male, you're looking at forty five pounds. Don't go past that. And if you can get it lower than that, do it. And don't take stupid weight. Yeah. Don't like, well, I got a, a 40 mile bug out. I'm going to bring a four pound ax with me for what you need water and some calories and maybe a sleep system. You're good. You can buy a, a, a handsaw that weighs 10 Nothing. ounces, yeah. eight ounces yep. and pack that in there. If you really have to cut anything. But again, like if you've never used one of those, I have one in my bag. Um, but if you've never used one of those chainsaws that yep. you grab with your hands, you Work could out. whoop your butt. Yep. I would do it when we go to the lake mm -hmm. just to do it, and it smokes you. Yeah, and so, it's a total workout, and man. And so much better foraging for wood <laughs> than cutting. If it's long, put the butt end over the fire and let it <laughs> burn, and then it. slide some more in as it goes. <laughs> you know, and a lot of people uh, miss out on the concept that 
time, calories, and energy is a real thing. Yeah. If you don't have to burn time, you don't have to burn calories, you're not wasting your energy doing something, that's all the better. The, the less sweat that you perspire, the less calories that you burn, the less you have to put back in the machine to keep it running, the less weight you have to carry in the first place. So just because you have a bag that can carry 50 pounds of gear doesn't mean that it should. What's up, Will? Yes, that is correct. Listen to that voice inside observation without understanding well and again it, it comes down to a lot of times we think more highly of ourselves yep. than we should yep. and it becomes you know a, a point of reality and be realistic if it's 10 pounds it's 10 pounds at least it's 10 pounds of something um you know versus 50 pounds and mm -hmm. a broken ankle yeah absolutely absolutely but be honest with yourself about your capabilities yeah i'd rather have let's say you're you know you're busted up for whatever reason and you, your max is 15 pounds right i yeah that's no i mean i i've said it before i mean that's my plan um i got young kids yeah I, i'm not going anywhere yeah like literally okay guys we got to walk five miles today <laughs> oh it'd be like that video that guy <laughs> that guy says uh He's like, here, I'm going to show you how to silently open up Velcro. Right. And he tears ah! up the screens. <laughs> that's what bugging out with my kids would be like. Dude. And so I know that's not a thing. Like, yep. I, I got to realize that and, and, and go, you know, you have to look beyond yourself and look at your entire party. Absolutely. Sometimes we get caught up in ourselves, and we're like, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And then it's like. Oh, but I have a seven-year-old, and I have a nine-year-old. Oh. Been wondering who Squid was. This guy right here, <laughs> the opposite of bear, which is this. Literally. Squid, bear, squid, bear, bear, squid. Go ahead. I'm not going anywhere either. I'm not, no. I'm not going anywhere either, yeah. There, we have a video on here uh, called Bugging Out with Babies. You can go watch that video. It's 20 minutes of me of me trying to get from our house to grandma's house, which is a quarter mile away, <laughs> with my wife and three kids. With and their bags. With, yeah, just being completely realistic, being like... And you were whooped. Yeah. You were just be like, Let's, we're going to go a quarter mile. It took 20 minutes to go a quarter mile, and the whole time was like... Okay. Well, you finally, you, you finally let uh, Cheyenne take the mower. Yeah, remember, remember that? Yeah, like, she was all like, "I want to ride the lawnmower." I'm like, of course you do. You're 11. Why wouldn't you? I want to bug out on the lawnmower. Nyquil. Nyquil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now you're carrying 40 pounds of kid yeah. too. <laughs> you need a wagon. Yeah. All right, what's this thing? All right, go. So this is the one I actually. So my concept of bugging out is a little bit different um my concept of it is uh my truck's always with me so my truck is my bug out yep. and all my stuff is in it unpacked for me to be able to use but i threw in one of my old bags that just sits in there same kind of thing i mean is that 511 bag i mean it's it's a big bag yep um opens all the way so that you can get down um, to the bottom, which alleviates some of that, some of that packing. Um, it has, you know, the multiple pockets with places for stuff, you know, whatever you want to put yeah. in there. Um, same kind of like front slim pocket with a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of openings here. This is a standard issue, like ACU bag. Right. Um, I mean, made by probably Rothko, I bet. No, no. Actually, it's called Bug Out Gear. Be ready. <laughs> Bugoutgear.com. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so this has got to be legit. That, dot com. Yeah, dot com. Palmetto is going to slap the guy that came up with this camo pattern. Oh, I know. I, you don't like no, digital you know what's camo? Even better? Those blue camis that we oh, got. Oh, dude. Those are I, horrendous. I literally waited <laughs> until the day before you were required to have them. <laughs> to get a set like because i just refuse to get them i refuse to get those stupid blue boots uh whoever makes whoever does, that's another thing like uniforms in the military is nothing but a racket oh i know it's it's, it's what senator is able to get their company out of their state yep. to make uniforms and and yep. then they make you know make a uniform change and make you buy all that garbage <laughs> I remember the, the gold 
I'm gonna call the rock monster by a guy in formation. <laughs> rock monster. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, anywho, um, same kind of thing. It's got you know some more of the the mold stuff. I'm not a big believer um, in tacking stuff on. Yeah. Uh, because another thing about tacking stuff on, it throws the weight of the bag off too. Yeah, it does. Because you're putting and weight it flaps outside. around. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I just don't want anything to get snagged. So, I mean, but this is kind of your standard bag. Same thing. It's got the, the waist strap, um, you know, the buckles and the, the, the yep. stuff sewed on the buckles. Uh, and actually this has a camelback pocket. Yep. Um, and you can run your camelback all the way down. So uh, that, that was nice about this as well. Hey, so, Will. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Were you issued this color green? <laughs> Just curious. Was it this color green right here? <laughs> About like this? Is this green? I'm colorblind. It is. Okay, perfect. I was well, let's just do that one next. Well, don't tell me how to live my life, bro. I'm going to tell you how to live Okay, my life. all right. Fine, Dad. <laughs> Fine. So here's one. Let me. He's not actually my dad. That'd be weird. <laughs> let's just make sure. <laughs> yeah, we're clear on that. Um, all right. You look some great you, for 70. Some of you guys, some of you guys should recognize this guy. Um, I mean, I've had this since the uh, uh, mid The Bok Choy province in Vietnam. Bok Choy province in Vietnam. Uh, so, uh, you know, standard Alice pack. But, you know, again, if you're on a budget and you can go down and pick one of these up at the surplus store for 10 bucks. Yeah. Like, it's, and this is something that you would want to stack your stuff in the right way, right? Because you can only yep. reach in the top. Um, hey, brother Roger. And, what we don't know what we're just <laughs> and, shenanigans. Uh, you know, again. Uh, yep. You know, you can get the frame as well to make it a little bit more sturdy. This thing s stinks to carry <laughs> without a frame. Yeah. Um, I used to hate it. I did it for a while, and uh, when I was doing um, Cesar and Sar, and. Uh, it was horrible until I got the frame and it just, it made things so much better. It's just harder to put in the helo. Yeah. Um, just because of limited space. But again, if you're on a budget, like that's a, it's a, it's a good bag. It's, and it's, I mean, it's lasted hey, me brother, over 20 Ken. years. Yeah. So why not? A um, lot of that surplus stuff really is, you know, it's not as high speed, low drag, but man, it, it still gets it done. Yeah, you could hang with us, you know. <laughs> One day, when we declassify this current uh, forward operating position, we'll let you know. In in Uzbekistan. <laughs> Uzbekistan, yeah, that is correct. No, Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. <laughs> That's where um, I used to put my. He was then less than two. Yeah. But whenever like my oldest or second oldest, <laughs> seven, would get in trouble, I had this gated area in our house. And I used to deport him to Uzbekistan. <laughs> His name's Beckett, so Uzbekistan. Uh, here, why don't you talk yours? All right, I will. Mm. So, Palmetto. Do you um, need anything? No, I'm good, brother. You said as far as, like, comfort, frame, yoke, and waistband, yes. Unless you have a long torso, at which point the waistband is more of, like, a belly button band. So, <laughs> be, be advised. Um, in some cases, and especially on certain bags, uh, they put the waistband, uh, internal frames are good. Texahomistan, yeah, not to be confused with Arklatexahomis. Arklatexahomis, there we go. Um, but that waistband, or the belt, rather, can be way too high on certain bags, depending on which bag it is. And, uh, like, for example, I had a Drago bag that that thing, honestly, the waist belt rode above my belly button. It was pointless. It provided no comfort whatsoever and no security at nothing. Um, and, in fact, it was an interference with my chest rig. So, no way, no. Um, I'm going to get my uh, my personal bug out bag current bug out bag right now which is a condor 72 hour bag so stand by hold on
squid disappeared, so I put it where squid was at. But he came back, so now I have a conflict of interest. I love this bag more than you. Keep going. I'll talk in the background. Perfect. So this is the Condor Elf Ninjas. 64170. Holy cow, bro. I think my left leg weighs 170 and is about 6'4. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is the uh, Condor 72 hour bag. You y'all have seen it in other videos, but what I wanted to point out is this is a $75 bag. Beg. This is a $175 bag. Uh, they're extremely similar in construction. Who makes that one? This is Condor. Condor. And a lot of guys are like, that's airsoft crap, man. That's straight from China. You think 511's sewing bags in North America? No, they're not. Um, so My fault. I this bag is excellent for the money. It's pretty large. It has, you know, it's got the molly on the outside, molly fields. It's got the um, hook and loop. You can't say Velcro without getting so, uh, sued. You know, pocket here, pocket here. You know, and this is where I keep, like all my doodads are up here. This is a toboggan cap filled with fake snuff and pack cover and whatever. You know, you guys can go watch other videos on those bags. I don't know, Ken. I mean, I am Ulao, and uh, what's Ulao? Go watch it. You can't compete if you don't manufacture in China. Uh, unfortunately, yes, that's accurate. So it's it's a good bag that just slid off the chair, and um, it's the 72-hour bag from Condor. And for 75 bucks, my thought process was I needed to replace the Drago that I had that was just crap, right? It was not a good beg. So I was like, well, you know what? I'll get this Condor. They have not let me down on some of the web gear that I have. Some of it's Condor. Some of it's, you know, military issue. Some of it's, you know, old Blackhawk stuff. You know, it's an assortment of stuff. But the Condor stuff has been exceedingly good to me for an excellent price. <gasps> I see a thing. So I got this bag for 75 bucks. Oh, what is this? Well, who look who it is. Can I move this? Yeah. I don't know. Can you? Watch your uh, table there. Look who it is. This is not a bag. Um, well, we this... can test if it fits in no, a 511. No, you cannot. <laughs> That's exactly right. Civilians here at Mill Spec and think it's great. Better hear Mill Spec and think, but built that's by the lowest, lowest bidder. bidder. Yeah. That's correct. Um, some of those bags have to weigh 10 pounds at least. Uh, yeah, some of these bags are pretty heavy. The bags themselves, this 511 bag is not light. I picked it up and I was like, what's in here? Nothing. It's the bag. That bag yeah. of bones is light though. Hello from Missouri. Bag of what is? The bag of bones you're holding. No, this is not a bag of bones. This is more than just flesh. He's put on over half of his birth weight in the first month yep i'm gonna which is awesome i'm gonna keep this thing for a while you don't mind do you no let's go okay he's right. asleep i'm gonna go he right. was asleep oh, oh no how's that how's that how's that oh. all right do it all right elijah let's look at your backpack <laughs> That's not elijah. i know i'm just kidding one all day. right so this is the one that i bought they ended up being about 50 bucks a piece um but the outfit Mr. Squid uh, and the boys. Um, this came with it. <clears throat> and actually, it's pretty cool. I haven't looked inside of it, but it literally has like a full fishing kit, um, a fire starter, uh, tin foil, like a few other things. Um, but it's, I mean, it's, pr it's actually pretty cool as a, like a free gift to go with it. But you know, there's a there's a top pocket up here. Um, the front flap will open up, and there's a That's my smile. small front pocket. Um, again, the mole uh, the mole stuff, uh, and then another pocket with again some pockets on the inside, and then in the big pocket, one of the things that I actually kind of really like I like these insert slides because uh -huh. if I want to get an extra set of 
soft plates or something, I could soft plate in um, easily in that insert. Um, or I could run a camel back in that. There's no camel back hole. Uh, actually, this is, there's one more pocket. There. I can put it there. Yep. Um, so same thing. Um, but like I said 50 bucks for the bag. Uh, the only thing so far that I have a complaint for is this not being stitched so the buckles can't come off. I do. Um, but it needs to be opened. Good bag. I think it was apesurvival.com. It says um, the name on it. Eva Tech well, or something. It says this, but then what came with it was different. Uh, Eva Tech gear for tactical mines. Yeah. Throw that back Bro. there. Bro! Throw that back there. Bro, that was my um, favorite. <laughs> it's not cold. Do you want another one? That's fine. Sure? Yeah. Um, so, fancy. the only other complaint I have on it is that I think it would be pretty rough on the shoulders. Yeah. There's not a lot of padding in the strap. Um, you know, but I'm looking at this thing maybe being 15 yep. pounds. Yep. Uh, 15 or 20 pounds for Laura and probably 10 pounds for the boys. So I, I'm not looking at putting a lot in here, which means it's not gonna pull on their shoulders as hard. But if you fill this thing up um, for yourself and it was, you know, 30, 40 pounds, I think over time, um, these straps would, would rub a bit. I mean, yeah, know, yeah, I've already felt yeah, that. I, it's and, pretty thin. Yeah, and so there's really not any padding there. It gives the illusion of being padded when you look at it, yes. but there's not much there. Right. Um, Thank you, Miss Squid. Mm -hmm. right, so I don't know how many bags that's been so far, but we got two more. One you've seen before. Um, my something, something, is something pounds. My Terra 40 is 30 pounds. Oh, well, that's good. Your eyes are better than mine. You're also closer to it than I am. The, My uh, eyes are better than yours, but... Well, and so, what was that other video, video we were going to shoot? Humility? <laughs> <laughs> Remember that one? We haven't shot it yet. <laughs> You're going to get humble in between that yeah, one? Yeah, okay. that's how it works. Okay. No. So, so, hold on. They need to understand. The text on the screen... Is really is, small. It's this big. It's literally this big at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. And it's only there for like... 15 seconds maybe yeah so if we don't see it right away and then it fades out then it's, it's so we, we try if we miss miss something from you sorry um we try to see it to see if there's a question yeah um and then well the other thing we wanted to talk about tonight too was okay all those bags are well and good right um but they're also pretty darn obvious yep like you're carrying something like that anybody who sees you knows that you're full of supplies and everything else yep. um and it's probably very deliberate of what's in your supplies as well. Uh, the expectation of what they could potentially take from you or et cetera. And so one of the things we talked about just right before this was, you know, the importance of having also stuff that's inconspicuous. Yep. So if it's not full SHTF, yep. um, but maybe just, you know, there, there's disruptions going on. Again, going back to Gray Man and you wanting to blend in a little bit, if you can be that guy, um, you know, having... Having some bags like like this one here, I don't know, Cal Pack, right, whatever it is, um, but it's a very inconspicuous um, bag, triple pocket, not as many um, not as many places to put stuff. You'd have to stack load this the right way as well. Um, but I, you know, it just looks like here's my gym bag. Yeah. You know, I'm going to the gym, um, and I've I've showed this one before, but you know, this is my this is my I carry in society, and it literally is a 31 bag. Um, my wife owns the company. No, uh, I do not. <laughs> I haven't bought a 31 bag. They didn't, they didn't he give you at least a portion of it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that is not a polite gesture, so, ma'am. This not, this I'm I'll carry with me if I'm feeling like. I'm just not trusting where I'm going. Normally, Ballistic it's, normally, it's in, <laughs> normally it's in town, um, but it's got you know my sub 2000 in it that folds up real nicely and can fit in there um, uh, with Glock mags and uh, uh, 33 round uh, magazines that I carry in here. But you know, walking around with this bag, you would never know that I have that firepower inside of it. Yep. Uh, and again, same kind of stuff in it. Dad, Some extra up. extra food. This is more for a tactical than it is a bug out. 
But, uh, and that, is that the last one? I think so. That's the last one. But I think that's a nice cross section of yeah. bags to kind of get an idea of. Like, I think every bag is going to have a pro and con. Um, and even for you specifically is going to have a pro and a con. Um, just because of how you're built, uh, you know, the stuff you decide to carry. Um, we do now. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Um, so, you know, just... You know, make sure you make all those considerations um and again go within your capability I, that would be the biggest advice just be realistic i mean there's so many guys i knew who way overpacked and uh you I mean they they would be smoked yep like smoked so that's why i advocate that people go play with their stuff live out of your bag for a weekend in your backyard the worst case scenario is you pack up your stuff, you go back in the house, and you go, all right, I need to rethink everything that I have going on. Best case scenario, you learn something. You're going to learn. Just just go play with your gear in your backyard. And and apply the rule of threes to your bug out loadout, right? Three is two, two is one, one is none. Yep. If you only have one way to do something in your bag, um, you might as well not even have it because yep. it's going to fail. Yeah, especially right when you need it. Yep. Yeah. Say bye, Mini Squid. Goodbye, Mini Squid. Tacticalbaby.com. Hi. Tactical diapers. <laughs> Building your fire team, one infant at a time. Hey, I told you I got a fire team now. I got four. Yeah. <laughs> That's correct, Wayman. You need um, four for a fire team. We uh we actually did last Monday. Just who can actually be on the fire team? Uh, when we get to heaven. Well, then I will have six. Six yeah. fire team. I will have six. Your... That's almost a platoon. Yep. We did a bit on that. What's that? Um, putting plates in your bag. We yeah. just talked about that last yep. week. By the way, um, I told Cody if he wanted to come back on a Monday, let me know. Yeah. So absolutely, Uncle Cody, and I told him also pick a topic, and we'll. Uh, We'll do this. I think he brings some interesting perspective because he's young and in college. Yeah. But still into preparedness. So um, what do y'all think? You know, those of y'all that saw Uncle got, Cody, what do you think? You just got 20-year-old squid to buy cowboy boots. I'm yeah, surprised. we did. Well, that's a Texas thing. Oh, You guys are awesome. Thank you, guys. Oh, you're welcome, Nikki Gold. We're not awesome. No, We're just you guys are awesome. two random dudes on a porch somewhere. Undisclosed location, consuming Uzbekistan. adult beverages. Uzbekistan. Is, is Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Don't tell me how to live my life, Dad. Yeah. Yeah, that oath is uh, not anything anybody's gonna forget anytime soon, William. Don't sweat it. What's that? Don't forget that oath we all took. He said, "Sounds uh, like a good time." Cheers. Hi, Bear. Hi, Mac. What are you doing? This? Are you drinking Sam Adams? <laughs> You should be. Thanks for letting me hang out with you guys. You're welcome. You're welcome anytime. Thank you for hanging out. Yeah, we try and do this about seven-ish on Mondays. And uh, the Squid and Air phone is now currently in the possession of the U.S. Postal Service. Yeah. Which means there's at least a 50% chance I'll actually get it this week. So. Um, oh, I remember. I didn't finish the thought. You never here's, do. here's a question sure. I wanted to pose, which was, if you could only carry one thing right say you're traveling for work or whatever you've got restrictions of what you can bring um but if you're going to carry one thing what is the one thing you would bring i'm going to pause for five seconds for me it's a high lumen flashlight i can take that on any airplane i can take it anywhere with me um a high lumen flashlight can disable and buy you time uh, if you ever need it. So that, like, if I have to travel, that's at least, that's my one thing that I'll go, that I'll take with. You know, I mentioned on camera once that uh, I was in the bowels of the DFW airport. Uh, we were doing work there. Oh. And I walked through, I walked <laughs> through two checkpoints up to a third before realizing that I was lost. And then was like, okay, I'm lost. Let me ask these TSA agents, where am I? I'm in the wrong place. 
So they're like, oh yeah, you're in the wrong corridor. You need to go down here, go all the way back out, go over a hundred yards, come back in. Like, that sounds great. As I'm walking away, I realize my pistol is still on my hip. Loud and proud, outside the waistband, open carry. Nobody said a word. <laughs> so four agents at each checkpoint, checkpoint number three. So I walked past the total of 12 agents. Nobody said a word. And uh, <sighs> I had a guy who was like, you're totally making that up. You're full of bull crap. That never happened. I was like, <laughs> with me when I traveled much. I wasn't um, on a plane, though. But I, but I, uh, it was a knife I kept there. Yeah. And I used to stash it in the airport. That's awesome. So that when I would get uh, off the plane, I would walk over and like kneel down, use my phone, and stick my hand in this fake tree grass. To <laughs> <laughs> be like, <laughs> and pull my knife up. It was like an Arkansas pig sticker about like this big. No, it's no. just a regular pocket knife, but. Yeah, it know. was something. Yeah. Yeah, that's and correct. I kept, and because I was going to one location for a while. I actually kept a bag, um, a bug out bag, uh, in the hotel, and they kept it for me over the weekend. And I would get it, uh, you know, when I check back in the next week. Yep. And uh, so I had one there uh, with me as well. I had uh, when I first started getting into preparedness, I was working on the road, and so I had a big uh, job box, a knack steel box in the bed of my pickup truck. Yeah, I remember and, that. And. Um, it was you showed it to the, us it's outside a church one day yeah yeah it's filled with stuff yeah you opened stuff. it was. and i was like oh, yeah was. well not anymore but at the yeah. time it was filled with stuff it was right? filled with stuff and so uh my boss would call me sometimes like we need you to hop on the plane end up in atlanta go look at a job i'd be like nah i think i'm gonna drive and they'd be like but if you you can't drive there's not enough hours in the day i was like i can get like 120 minutes of sleep in between here. I think I'm going to drive. And so I drove the whole U.S. <laughs> just because as much as I could, I didn't want to be away from that truck and that job box in yeah. case something happened. At least I had my bag with me. Well, and I think in the beginning, too, when you first start prepping, um, like, you're much more on edge, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think as, you know, as you do it and make it more of a lifestyle, yeah, Um it becomes much more natural. Yeah, you see the potential for nuclear holocaust around every corner. Yeah. It's like, what did the Koreans say today? Oh my gosh, at least I have my bag with me. Yeah, break away from your view. Yeah. People notice you, T. Yeah, well, that's that's correct, William. I, I, I had, when I was in the airport, I was going for a meeting, right? And so I was in a hurry. I was walking with confidence. I looked fairly well put together. And so it's called command presence. I was acting like I was supposed to be there, and nobody questioned. Hey, there's this guy walking around with a pistol on his hip. So well, I mean, well, that's the thing too. How many times do people just turn a blind eye? Yeah, because they don't want to deal with the situation, or they don't want to have conflict, or they don't want to. Yeah, and I... and there's certain there's certain switches you can flip in somebody's mind by by acting a certain way. Sorry, <laughs> that's all right. It's really funny. Yeah, I see him. Uh, <laughs> if you act like you're supposed to be somewhere, most people will go, ah, that's cool. He's supposed to be here. Um, I used to carry a clipboard around in my young enlisted days, mm -hmm. literally with just a bunch of papers on it. I won like sailor of the quarter. That quarter. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I wasn't, there was no, no on on the it, clipboard. but I would just, I would walk briskly and I would have that, have that in my hand. And I ended up winning Sailor of the Quarter that quarter. <laughs> the uh, one of the we were doing a job down in Dallas, and one of the guys at the the security house, right? Big to say it's a gated community is an understatement. It's a compound, right? And so you pull up, and they've got all these security measures, and this guy walks out, and I'm looking at him. And he's got his clipboard, and he's standing there looking at me, writing down details. And I rolled the window down. I said, "Hey, what ship were you on?" And he just looks at me and I said, Submariner. And he goes, how did you know? I said, the way you hold that clipboard, man. Just married to that clipboard. Checklist after checklist after yeah. checklist, right? He was married to it. Well, it's like when we went to one business to drop stuff off. Uh -huh. and I'm not going to mention names, but we went to a business to client drop off product. And, uh, you know, we walked in the lobby and they got to check you in. And we didn't show an ID. We, we, we could have we owned that place. That was a bad snap. Yeah. That quick. 
We could have owned that place. There we go. Bad. Like, just asked our Thank names. You, Squid. And that's what we asked for ID to, to validate. Didn't, like, even let us through yeah. to go find the guy that we just mentioned the first name. And he's like, oh, if you know where he's at, go ahead. Yeah, go find him. Yeah. So, Derek Kamingo, <laughs> who's a uh, long time, long time with the channel. Uh, no knife hands in there. <laughs> No knife hands, people. <laughs> We're getting the best looks from your wife right now. She's looking at us like, <laughs> yes, this is, this is real. This is real life. So Derek Kamingo asked, uh, the MyMedic uh, IFAC. This. You shouldn't. Harmony doesn't watch these either. <laughs> so she she knows what this is. Uh, and she can only assume what this is. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, But the MyMedic IFAC for 200 bucks. Go back in this channel. There's a couple, two or three medical videos. Go back and look for them. Just type in in the search bar. Not, not the opening of medical equipment. Not the opening of medical equipment. <laughs> type, type in the search bar, squid and bear, uh, IFAC, I-F-A-K, okay? There's, at one point I discussed in there, you can put your own together for about 100 bucks, And it's going to be everything that's in that My Medic pack for half the cost. If you have no time and a spare hundred dollars, get the my medic bag. Go ahead and get it. There's no no problem whatsoever. Yeah. If you don't have a spare hundred dollars and you do have twenty minutes of time, um, see you, Caddy Wampus. I have not forgot about your email. I will be sending you an email, brother. I promise. As soon as I get this phone squared away, uh, but you can put your own iFact together for about a hundred bucks. Uh, most stuff. Most you can. yeah. Like, when you buy completed things. You're going to pay the premium for those completed things. And what, what they're going to say is, you know, tested gear. Yeah, not it's not like they pull out, you know, this is a cat or generation six cat tourniquet. We're going to test it on ourselves. No, it's th that that product has been tested. They're not running not around. necessarily by them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They're not running around going, this is the brand new Israeli bandage and sticking it on each other in the office. <laughs> it's just that that's a proven product. So... Don't waste your money on clotting agents. To a point, I would I would respectfully disagree. They're not generally needed until they are. And then when they are, there's nothing like it. You can pack a wound, you can apply pressure, but in certain instances, a Clot clotting agent is going to go a long way to keeping somebody alive. But probably the number one thing is tourniquet. Have a tourniquet. Yeah. You know? There is an oil for that. Yeah. That's correct. That's Ger one of my geranium. Geranium. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. My wife's got oil. Traumatic blood loss. <laughs> it's like he's got half a pint left. Oh, there's lavender. Oh. Here's, here's some peace and calming. Yeah, a little peace and calming and some peppermint to wake you up real good. Here's some pan away. Yeah, some pan away. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell that our wives are both into into oils? <laughs> That's one of my favorite memes. We had to get, dropped a drill press on his head, and so he hurt his neck. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, you're laughing at that. Um, so he, he hurt his neck, and he's like, hey, let's get a little sore. And I went in my truck and grabbed this big roller I've got that's like a mixture of Panaway and uh, what's ortho -ease. It? ortho ease. Ortho ease. And he put it on there, and he got relief um, within an hour. I told him to put it on every 20 minutes, and he started feeling better. Yeah. Um, idiot still... dropped a drill press on his head. Yeah, he got clocked by a drill press. <laughs> Daryl, um, thieves, that's correct. Thieves. I actually have some in the bottom of my lunch bag. It's just there. Um, Daryl, send me, send us a link. The wife says cayenne pepper. Yes, yes. sir. Yep. It's Brother Roger and Sister yep. Donna. Hey, brother. Y'all go check out Brother Roger's channel. He's got some cool stuff over there. Uh, <laughs> the best friend said they look like prison tats, and I said I doubt it. What, mine? No. No. Did we tell him about when we walked in to get breakfast? Hold on. <laughs> Daryl. <laughs> Don't send it now. Send us an email. Squid and Bear, N-T-X-M-A-G, at Gmail. Send me the study. I'd like to see it. And if it's a good study, I'll absolutely acquiesce to your position. I just, I want to see it first. I'm unaware of it. Uh, well, so that's good. No, thank you for. Yeah. Information is great.
Why are you looking at me like that? Because you just went from prison hats to what? Oh, we, we're, we're all over down. the place. We're all over the place. Clearly. Um, no, it's, uh, it's, these are not prison tats. This arm cost me 600 ish dollars. Uh, Jesse Wicks, thicker than blood tattoos in New York. And then this arm, I was like, here's what we're going to do. You're going to come to my apartment. I'm going to hand you a thousand dollars cash. I'm going to sit at my dining room table with a magnum of vodka while reading a book and you're going to tattoo me. So over three days and 18 hours, he did this entire arm for a thousand bucks cash. So, so no, I, I mean, I gave him a general idea. I was like, I'm thinking this, this, and this go to town. And he free handed the whole thing. So that's an angel. And that's a demon. And it's kind of, this is while I was dur during my apostasy, when I was at war with the father, guess who won? Who would have thought? Who, won? who would have thought? The father won. But during my apostasy, I was in a metal band. You're welcome, brother. And uh, so I, I've always been intrigued by the duality of man, the ability for great people to do terrible things, and the ability for, of terrible people to do great to things. Do great things. Yeah. So which is why I have kind of the yin yang, you know? That's your life on that sleeve. That's correct, brother. It's uh, the duality of man. So... Anyway, no, they're not prison tats. Uh, never been to prison, although I've gotten that question a few times. <laughs> and especially in person, it's, you know what I mean? So. Kiss. Um, good night, baby. Good night, Mr. Elijah. Good night. Um, you can go to, go to any other video that is posted before this and look in the description and the email uh, link is there. Yeah. So it, when we do this live, I can't. There's some kind of voodoo that can be performed that will allow me to insert the Watch description the beforehand. Cat. Yeah, that cat's a d bag. I know. Um, but we're not that advanced. We do this in our spare time, yeah. and we're getting better. I think so. I think so. But you know, live and learn. That's we tell you guys all the time. Be better tomorrow than you are today. We're trying. I was recently on a podcast where they led with description of me. They're like, YouTuber. I was like, that wouldn't be what I would lead with. But oh, okay. a YouTuber. But I digress, and he is a dumbass. Sorry for the length. You dumbass? Really? You would just type the word dumbass onto the screen and then make me say the word dumbass four times? <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> Dumbass. Six. <laughs> we are, you know, we again trying to be better every day. So, sometimes. <laughs> uh, is that a dress? Yes, I'm wearing a dress. Mm -hmm. Thank you it's for a, noticing. It's a moo -moo. Actually, actually. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't want to tell anybody. Uh, stay away from the cowboy hat in the closet. That cowboy hat. Sometimes you got to do what you. Hey, you, gotta, you gotta pay the rent. You gotta. If pay it comes in ones and fives, it comes in ones and fives. You know, is what it is. So that and the uh, the fireman helmet and the red banana hammock. It's man Tuesday night second stage. Uh, dumbass two words, glass houses and all. You may have been asked before, but would you train in? Would you train in all aspects of survival? Um, go on, Sears School. Answer that one. Uh, what what aspects of survival would you train? Everything? I think first and foremost is a primitive first aid. Mm, good like answer. That's first and foremost is you've got to know how to fix yourself and fix others. Because um, if it's truly survival, uh, you know, a cut can kill you. Yep. So I, I would say that would be first. Um, you know, but you have to really have the basics down making fire purifying water stuff of it because um i don't think you have to be like way advanced in every aspect of it but i, I think you need to at least have done and practiced different methods um you know take a cpr class at the y take mm -hmm. a first aid class at the y um i think if they're not free they're cheap 
Uh, yeah, they're you know so at least get that you know that basic understanding where the major arteries are, where pressure points are, um, how to apply you know how to apply bandages. I, those type of things is I, I think what I would point to. Um, you know, and then if you want to get to more advanced stuff. What up, Jimmy? Go ahead. Yeah, if you want to get to more advanced stuff, you, you certainly can. Um, you know, you can you can take an EMT class. Uh, yep. In the evenings, you can, uh, you know, take then advanced classes after that and different things. But you know, I think if you have a basic understanding of that and a basic understanding of, you know, fire, water, food. What else? Shelter. Shelter. Yep. Um, systems check. Am I bleeding? Am I breathing? Yeah. What hurts? Why does it hurt? What? Yeah. When I was, I told you this one the other day. When I was in Sears school. Um, they play this messed up <laughs> crap all night long, and one of them was this poem by Edgar Edgar Allan Poe that was called Boots, and it's just I still remember it to this day. But they used to play this other track of this little girl um, screaming. Daddy, Daddy, help me! The bad man's trying to get me, blah. <laughs> and oh, like over and over again. And finally, I'm sitting in my, I don't know, little tiny box I'm in, um, and uh, at the POW camp. Yeah, at and, the end of Sears school. Yeah, yep. and uh, I'm sitting in this thing, and finally, I got to the point. I don't even know what time it was. It was in the middle of the night, and I finally just yelled, "Just get her already!" <laughs> <laughs> the next thing you know like somebody's got my ankles and i'm being yanked out and and uh <laughs> grab your rags grab your rags and they're thrashing me all over against the walls and <laughs> um okay <laughs> the email address ntx november tango x-ray mag mike alpha golf at gmail.com or squid and bear a n d bear n t x m a g at gmail.com uh is our well and also say depending on how things go too um you know we may come out and see some of you guys yeah if you're willing um <laughs> hey lois North Texas Mutual Assistance Group. Yes, yes. that's uh, what this was before it devolved into the Squid and Bear show. <laughs> um, devolved. Devolved, correct. Um, but, yeah, and so, you know, like, if you're willing, you know, maybe later on, come the fall, uh, we'd love to come maybe see some of you guys and do some videos at your place. What are you doing? <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> All right. That is a big B. That is a gigantic B. Uh, I'm happy to see him. Thank you, Daryl. Okay, Ken Fennin asked, 300 blackout, my opinion. My opinion? Uh, cool round? <sighs> yeah, I know, you know, for a suppressed weapon, it's more effective than 7.62 by 39. Um, more stopping power than 5.56 by 45 NATO. But honestly, it's a boutique round. For a say for a primary weapon in an shtf situation not for um rule of law enjoyment of shooting for you know hunting you know shooting feral hogs or whatever for preparedness the likelihood that you're going to go out there into the world and be able to scavenge 300 blackout goose egg well and this goes to my argument against your 45 as a shtf i know know. which is reloading i know i uh, you're using a heck of a lot of powder and a heck of a lot of lead yep. to be able to put those rounds together. I know. Right, so I'm also picking up chunks of flesh and throwing them against the wall every time I squeeze the trigger, I, though. I get it, I'm, and I'm with you. I, I know, I, but it's it's understanding the downside to it. Yeah. So that's the same yeah. argument with the 300 blackout is if it brings you joy, if it gives you confidence, and if you have so many rounds that you never have to worry about trying to find some again, go for it or you're a huge reloader i mean i know a guy um that i got to know pretty well tra- in my travels um he literally had two tons of lead at his house yeah yep I, you can reload whatever the heck you want to at that point <laughs> I, I mean cannonball 50, 50 caliber you know 50 right. caliber pistol rounds do it i know a guy not and, far from here and he had 
I don't remember what he said the legal limit of powder is. Right. Um, but he literally has a closet that has a suppressor <laughs> or uh, what is that called? That the <sighs> dispenser? No, the system that can uh, extinguish. Oh, fire suppression. Yeah, he yeah. has fire suppression in this closet because he has just under the legal amount of powder <laughs> that you can 